Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey everyone, welcome to the special episode of Retro S. In this episode, we turn the clock back to 1985 with a week one review of one of the most recognizable Star Wars FPS of the 19th. Has Night Dead succeeded in preserving this old PC game? Or is this game better off to be more forgotten? Without further ado, let's find out. So far, 2024 has been the year of remastering classic video games. Earlier this month, we saw the rematches of the classic Tomb Raider games. And about a week from now, the remake of the first two classic Star Wars Battlefront games will be released. Before you ask us, guys, yes, we already have pre-ordered the Star Wars Battlefront Classics collection and will be featured in the next episode of Retro S, so stay tuned. Anyway, back to Dark Forces. The year 1983 was a significant year in video games in general. The year saw the release of the very first Star Fox game for the Super Nintendo, and one of the most biggest, most influential, significant FPS games of all time, Doom. Doom was an instant cult classic after its release. Even today, the modern community of this game is still very much active. An example of this would be one of the best mods of last year in my opinion, MyHouse.Wad. Unfortunately, one of the biggest unwritten rules of the gaming industry is that when a game becomes highly successful commercially and critically, copycats will sure to follow. As I have said time and time again in this channel, I could have made an entire video illustrating and expanding this unwritten rule, but you know what guys, I'm not going to. This cult classic is one of them. Star Wars Dark Forces was originally released by LucasArts for the PC and PlayStation in 1995. The game is set shortly before Episode 4 A New Hope. You play the part of Rebel Alliance mercenary Cal Katarn. It is up to you to go from planet to planet, uncovering a top secret galactic empire research project. The actors' ability scores are as follows. To kick things off visibility, give it 10. There are no colorblind modes in the actors' ability section of the options menu. However, due to the game's age, there is very little need for one. There are no color coded elements that can cause an issue for a colorblind player. Next up on ability, give it 10. In the remastered version of this game, there is some type of support during cutscenes. However, the original 1995 release does not. So if you are playing the remastered version, a player with a hearing impairment should be able to play this game with very few issues. Next up, mobility, give it 10.5. And the PC version was reduced to test it. The mouse and keyboard controls can be fully customized to suit your impairments. There is gamepad support out of the box. However, similar to Rise of the Triad Ludicrous Edition, there is no legacy stick layout available, and there is no way to customize the stick layouts. So if you're planning in to get into this classic, best to go for the PC version, and it's a by far more suitable for your impairments. And last but certainly by no means least, gameplay again it's head. Once again, Night Dive's pedigree in the preservation of all-time classics from the 90s is shown in this game. This game feels exactly how I remember it when I played the original version back in the 90s. Gameplay wise, this game has a lot of polish, keeping the majority of the feel, assets and other bells and whistles from the original great, mixed in with new features which is makes the game relevant to today's market, for example, widescreen support and high refresh rate monitor support. Game developers Night Dive Studios are responsible for the remake of System Shock, which to be honest still play the ever-loving hell out of. The remaster of Rise of the Triad, the Ludicrous Edition, the remake of Quake 2, and now, this game. In terms of the game's length, according to HowLongToBeat.com, this classic can be cleared in 9 hours. To put things into perspective, this 1995 classic has one hour of additional gameplay when compared to the original Max Payne, and four hours longer than the original Doom, in which I mentioned earlier. For 1985 standards, this game is pretty damn long. In summary, Star Wars Star Forces Remastered is yet another classic, textbook example on how to fully remaster a classic game from the 90s. You see, the original Dark Forces is a lot more than a simple Doom clone. Even today, the original Dark Forces is still hailed as an all-time classic from the 90s. 
due to the game's age, the system requirements to run this game are very low. Similar to all remasters of the era, you can switch between classic and remastered graphics with a simple touch of a button. Although there is no multiplayer available, it would be senseless to recommend that feature with this being so close to the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection's release date. So, if you're looking for a low-spec, old-school, first-person shooter to play over the summer, this game is highly recommended. And the overall score is a painstakingly close 98.75%. This is Spartan Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disabled Gamer Review signing out, and I'll see you guys in the next review.